I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a rolling paint stand that folds against the wall. I've been out here working on the different parts of the Carmen Ghia a lot lately, off camera, and I've been able to put some primer on and some body filler on some of these panels, but I've run into the situation where I just need a way to hang these up. Spraying on paint inside the shop is not a great thing, and I definitely cannot sandblast things in here. So today, I want to build some sort of a big rack thing that we can hang parts like this on, take them outside, do some work on them, and then bring them back in while they're still hung up and keep them inside the shop. But I also don't have a lot of floor space, so I don't have a place to keep this big rack thing. I've got an idea for making this rack where it can be folded up and tucked against the wall when I'm not using it. So let's head back to the shop and I'll show you this really simple idea for what I think is gonna be a perfect solution. Recently I was at a store and I saw someone putting away a rack of clothes and this rack was made to roll around to different parts of the store. And so I'm gonna basically use that same idea. It's gonna be two T-shaped pieces that are connected by some rods, but I wanna make the T's out of wood so that they're nice and heavy, they will hold things down. But I want to make sure that these rods are pieces that I can replace with different lengths. So over time, if I decide that six feet is not long enough, I can put in an eight foot or I can make it smaller if I need to, whatever. So we're going to use some steel pipe here that you can easily get at any home center. And we're going to make these tees out of four by fours. Basically, all I did for this was buy two uh, six foot four by fours and an eight foot. I cut the eight foot in half and that will be the bottoms of the tees. And we need to attach this to this and I want it to be really strong. So we're gonna use kind of a weird half lap thing. We're gonna chop out a section in the bottom, chop out a section in the top and fit them together. And so I think what I wanna do is actually cut out a section like that and then cut out that opposite section on this piece and then we can fit them together and there'll be plenty of glue surface in different directions so we can glue it up, we can drive in screws from different areas and it should theoretically hold it into that T. Now worst case scenario, if we ever needed to, we could put in some diagonal pieces here to reinforce it, but I don't think we'll need to. To change it up a little bit, for this one I'm going to use the circular saw. I've marked the two outer bounds of the little area that I need to cut out, and I'm just going to set the depth of the blade half the thickness of this wood and then run it through a whole bunch of times and make little pieces that I can knock out with a chisel. These things are what we're going to use to actually connect the two T's together. And these are made for structural applications like railings and things like that. But we're going to use them for something else. Regular Schedule 40 pipe fits in here. And so we're going to mount this this direction so that it can pivot that way. And that's because I want the two T assemblies to be able to fold like this so it can fold flat. So if we put it this way, unfortunately, the holes are too far out to match the thickness of this piece of wood. So we're going to take this to a bandsaw cut off these wings, drill some new holes in places that'll fit. And we'll do that on all these and get this thing put together. I got some five foot pipes for this and they go in these fittings and there's a little grub screw that you tighten down with an Allen key. And the pipes I got are threaded, which they don't need to be, but you just slide it in there and then tighten this down on it and it locks into place. 
Those things bolted together super easily. Now we're gonna put some casters on the bottom of this. So basically we're just gonna have some free spinning casters. These are four inch, they are hard rubber, so they will work fine on the concrete, but also they should work fine rolling them out into the yard. But I wanted to point something out. Most of these casters, when you buy them, have a hole that is bigger than the head of a screw. So if you get these, make sure that you either get a large lag bolt that you can stick through here that has a bigger head, or make sure you get some washers with a hole that is smaller than the screw head. I'm gonna run that through like that, and then that will hold it in place. Super floppy, just like I knew it would be. Oh, it definitely has more that way than I was expecting. Huh, okay, wow. Ran into a little issue, something I did not foresee. In these different fittings that I have, there is a lot of space right here so that these pieces can move freely, which means that this entire thing is leaning a whole lot and it's taking up all that slop. So I think what I'm gonna do is take one of these off, take it to the vise and see if I can squish these two pieces down so that they meet this little centerpiece in a way that's tight, and hopefully that will stop this from being able to happen. So I'm gonna try it on one of them, see if it works, and if it does, then I can do it to all of them, and if not, then we'll come up with something completely different. How is this gonna work? Oh, I don't know if that's moving or not. I don't think it did anything. It's, it bounced back. I don't have a big enough vise to really clamp it down. I think I would have to get it a lot hotter to be able to actually you know, get it bendable and squish it down. So I just gotta come up with something else, I think. I really like that fitting and I think it could be used for a lot of things, but there's just definitely too much, too much gap in there to be useful in this particular situation. Okay, I was trying to figure out how to get washers inside here to fill the gap. Anthony said that we should probably just get rid of this pin completely. So I'm gonna take this to the grinder get rid of this round over, pull the pin out, fit in washers and make it nice and tight and then put in a new bolt and nut and see if that will get rid of the slop enough to make this thing work. Oh, come on, man. Got this thing figured out and it took a minute because this piece right here is tapered. And so it's wider out here, and then as it goes towards the center, it gets a little bit smaller. And so I was trying to push the washers in around this piece at the wider section instead of at the thinner section. So the way that I ended up doing it is putting the washers on this direction and pushing the whole thing together with a little bit of extra tooling, meaning a screwdriver going through the hole. I was able to get everything centered, and then I drove in a screw, put on a nut, and now we have zero slop, and it is very, very tight. So this totally works, I just have to do it seven more times. Well, that's a thousand times better. And they're actually tight enough that it would probably work like this, but I do think we still need to add a piece. What I was originally planning on adding, that is a diagonal from here out to here somewhere so that we can kind of lock it together. That way when we drag it around, if it goes over bumps, it's not gonna start to fold up on itself, especially when there's stuff hanging on it. So to do that, I got another type of fixture that goes on this pipe, which means I have to take this off and slide it on. This thing actually worked. I mean, it took a little doing to figure it out, but I think it's good. It's stable enough for what I need. It collapses flat, so now we just have to take it out to the shop and actually try it. But we are at the shop. I mean, at the farm. We gotta go to the farm and hang some stuff on it and paint some stuff on it. We got this thing out here at the farm and it's ready to use, but I thought of one more thing that I wanted to add to the side to take advantage of the, the shape that we have. So I got these pieces from Send Cut Send. It's a service where you just upload a two-dimensional drawing and they will laser cut things out of steel or aluminum or wood or whatever you want and they'll ship them to you. So I got these in just a couple of days. These are a proof of concept because I think I can use these to mount on the side and hang a lot more stuff. Let me show you. Also, I wanted to point out that these are actually just raw steel. 
They actually have powder coating now, but I didn't want to do that because these are going to get paint all over them, so I didn't really worry about it. But just know that that's available. The whole idea here is that they've got a hole in them, so you can put in a bolt there, and they'll pivot on that bolt, and then go up like this, and will be captured underneath another bolt, and then you can hang things on all these little grooves, so you can paint more stuff. I got those brackets on the end so I can hang smaller pieces from those, but to hang on the actual main center section here, I've got some S hooks and just some wire so I can wrap up some different length hangers so that I can hang the engine lid right there so that I can put some primer on it. So here it is, the finished rolling cart holder thingy. I don't know what you would call this thing, but it is very handy so far. I've still got to add the rest of the brackets on the end so that I can hang lots of different stuff. But with those brackets in place, it'll allow me to prime a whole bunch of pieces at one time. And the fact that it's on wheels makes it nice because I can actually take it out of the shop and be able to spray it out here. Luckily, it folds up because I'm running out of floor space inside the shop. So when I'm not using this thing, I can fold it up and stick it against a wall. If this gave you an idea for something that you could make in your shop, I would love to hear about it because I may take your idea and make one for myself. Let us know down in the comments. We've also got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Huh. Hmm. Well. No. That is some sploopy glue right there. Wow. Oh, I can hear myself talking in it. That's pretty cool. So, if this gave you an idea, blah, 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 bl